Hi, my name is Maureen Barr. I'm a professor of genetics at Rutgers University. It's really my honor to introduce today's WebEV talk. My lab has a long-standing interest in using the nematode C. elegans as a model system to study human genetics diseases. In particular, we're interested in human genetic diseases that affect the cilium. These are called ciliopathies. Shown here is a eukaryotic cell with a cilium projecting off its surface. Most non-dividing cells in the human body possess a cilium, so it's not surprising that um, diseases that affect the formation or function of cilia have devastating com consequences in human health um, development and disease. Most recently, this sensory antenna was found to not only receive signals, but send signals in the form of your favorite um, extracellular vesicles. Um, hello, everyone. Good evening. Good morning. If you on the other side of the planet. Uh, I would like to thank Clara, Carolina for this um, great opportunity to speak here to present at this prestigious web talk, web EV talk series. I have really learned and enjoyed all the talks. And I would like to thank Maureen for the summarization of the project and the uh, introduction. The title of my talk is Biogenesis and the Signaling of Cilia-Derived Extracellular Vesicles. The cartoon here depict a ciliated eukaryotic cells release extracellular vesicles directly budding from the ciliary membrane or from the plasma membrane that are ectosomes, and the cell release a exosome type of extracellular vesicles from um, MVBs, multivesicular bodies. So I love this cut home because the authors really imagined that we observe where the EV coming from and where the EV is going. So what I'm going to talk about today in our lab we have developed C. elegans as a model to study ciliary EVs, that is cilia derived EVs. This is exactly what we have. It's a highly tractable system that we can say a single extracellular vesicle where they are coming from and where they are going, where they are targeted. So this is outline of my talk. In the first part, I will talk about C. elegans is a powerful model for studying cilia-derived EV biogenesis and functions. Then on the second part, I will talk about ciliary EV release and targeting. In a recent story that we have published, um, ciliary EV carrying polycystine 2 are released upon mechanical stimulation of the sensory cilia of the male and the targeted to the vulva of her of his mating partner. Then on the third part of my talk, I will talk about an unpublished story that cilia, sensory cilia act as a specialized venue for regulated extracellular vesicle biogenesis and signaling. So first I will give you introduction of cilia and C. elegans and why C. elegans is a powerful model to study cilia-derived EVs. So cilia, cil, the word cilium is a Greek word, means thin hair. The plural form is the word cilia. So cilia share the basic, all the cilia share the same basic structure. The cilia a sensory organelle of the cell that sits on the surface of the cell to detect the microenvironment of the cell. So all cilia are built by the same processes called intraflagella transport, IFT. So the IFT complex is driven by the kinase motors moving anterograde toward the ciliary tip and retrograde toward the ciliary base. Although um, IFT 
has been thoroughly studied uh, the composition and each component, but the um, real function except uh, ciliogenesis the function of IFT is not well understood. So today I will talk about the kinesins that carry the IFT mode, uh, complex um, play a role in ciliary EV biogenesis. So the cross section of the cilia, because cilia are centrosome sum derived, so they share this nine plus two axonium basic structure this is a motile cilia. It contains central macrotubule pair. So this is a sensory cilium. It lacks the central pair. This is a cross section of this cilium. So the cilium has this axonium macrotubule core with ciliary membrane in sheath it. The ciliary membrane has different composition from the rest of the plasma membrane. That is important to say because that means cilia derived EVs have different composition from the plasma membrane, most likely. So cilia are ubiquitously present in our body. Um, primary cilia are found almost on all non-dividing cells in our body. So it's not surprising that cilia play essential roles in human development. Severe ciliary gene mutation cause embryonic lethal phenotype. The less severe ciliary defects cause a wide spectrum of human developmental diseases, collectively, collectively termed ciliopathies. So um, the hallmarks of ciliopathy include polycystic kidney disease, retinal degeneration, obese, digit development, situs inversus, and the motile cilia defects also cause hydrocephalus and male infertility. Recently, um, because cilia uh, house the major signaling transduction pathways such as hedgehog utilize cilia exclusively as signaling transduction platform and other major signaling pathways such as wind and notch also utilize primary cilia as signaling transduction platform. So it is not surprisingly that people started to recognize primary cilia regulate tissue homeostasis in that they regulate cancer development, neurological disorders, and metabolic diseases. So I listed three recent review articles here. So uh, cilia release extracellular vesicles are ubiquitously found. Um, it has been reported in many different uh, other systems, including the primary cilia. Um, I'm going to take three examples that has um, play important role in cilia biology that uh, the system also release extracellular vesicles. The first example is Clamadomonas, the green algae. This is an important model to study cilia because the IFT initially was found in Clamadomonas. The Clamadomonas vegetative growing cells release extracellular vesicles from the flagella tip. These flagella tip EVs contain digestive enzymes that digest the mother cell wall to release the daughter cell from the mother cell wall. We found that in C. elegans, the male release extracellular vesicles into the environment directly that alter the male locomotory behavior. And then in an ARPKD autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease mouse model, the cholangiocyte are found 
have primary cilia that are associated with abundant extracellular vesicles that are not found in the Y type. The authors propose either these cilia produce excessive EVs or they interrupt the absorption of EVs onto the ciliary membrane. So I listed all the classical early works showing the cilia release EVs for different functions, but I apologize for not include all the references because it's really abundant work showing cilia release extracellular vesicles. Since cilia release extracellular vesicles is such a conserved and ubiquitous phenomenon, we ask the question, what are the function of ciliary EVs? What their role in mediating development as well as tissue homeostasis in health and in diseased condition? So we set out to use C. elegans as an in vivo model to answer these questions. So here is C. elegans. I took this title from a book chapter written by Nobel Prize laureate Martin Chofai from Columbia University, who pioneered using GFP in live imaging in biology. It says, C. elegans a transparent window into biology. This really summarized the importance of C. elegans in the basic research field. So the C. elegans is a round small worm. It's about one milliliter long. It's transparent. It's a really a powerful genetic toolkit. And it has a highly tractable system. Every cell in C. elegans has a name and you can uh, trace it back to the fertilized egg, that the lineage is completely known. Then you can really observe what's happened in living animal by tagging a EV cargo um, in the worm. You can observe where the EV coming from and where they are targeting to. As any other system, C. elegans has been found release extracellular vesicles in different life stages and um, for different purpose. I just saw Dr. Wima here. This is her work. I take this image from her review article that the C. elegans embryo release extracellular vesicles during gastrulation stage. Then the C. elegans hyperderma cell also release uh, extracellular vesicles, exosome type extracellular vesicles for uh, cuticle extracellular matrix formation. Then the hypodermis also release extracellular vesicles for neuronal repair. And C. elegans also release large extracellular vesicles for neuronal homeostasis and neural protection. So these are done in the hermaphrodite. Now I'm going to introduce you the male. So the C. elegans is a um, hermaphrodite population. The male happens rarely, one in every thousand in the population. A hermaphrodite is a modified female that uh, has self-sperm, then switch to oogenesis later. The male, C. elegans has a special place in the um, genetics and the biology research because the male perform a most complex behavior in the C. elegans that is called male mating behavior. C. elegans is also developed in our lab as a model to study ADPKD. So ADPKD is a type of ciliopathy that is called autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. It's uh, one of the most common genetic disease and the causal gene is called 
human polycystine 1 and the polycystine 2. They are conserved. They have equivalent in the worm. So cilia research field actually is very similar to the EVA research field in that cilia would, were, were discovered long time ago, around 200 years, but function of cilia are not recognized until 1999, Dr. Marine Barr discovered that the polycystine homolog in the worm localized to sensory cilia and required for male mating behavior. This research initiated the whole ciliopathy research. So this is the mating dance performed by the male. This is a hermaphrodite, the male uh, circuit um, move around the hermaphrodite and finish the whole uh, ritual. So uh, let's have a close look of polycystine 1 and the polycystine 2. So in both in human and in worm, polycystine 1 and 2 form complex and localized to cilia and extracellular vesicles. So the polycystine 1 is a huge um, GPCR, adhesion GPCR with a GPS domain and a huge adhesion domain. Then the trip, the polycystine 2 is a trip channel that's complex with polycystine 1. So the trip channel are multi-modality sensory molecules involved in mechanical sensation, pain sensation, and thermal sensation. However, what, what are exactly the function of polycystine 1 and 2 on primary cilia are still controversial. And if they are evolutionarily conserved, that they are on cilia and on evase in human and in worm, there must be a role of these polycystines on evase. So we ask the question, what are the roles of polycystines on the evase and how they may contribute to cellulopathies and mediate intercellular communication in health condition, normal physiological condition. So now I'm going to talk about second part. Ciliary EVA carrying polycystine 2 are released upon mechanical stimulation of the sensory cilia of the male and targeted to the vulva of his mating partner. So um, this is a male carton showing that uh, the male specific sensory neuron express the uh, polycystine 1 and the polycystine 2 and the release extracellular vesicles into the environment outside of the animal. And this is a tail. It contains 17 male specific neurons that release extracellular vesicles into the environment. Then uh, we performed electron tomograph analysis on the cilia and discovered abundant extracellular vesicles in the glial lumen that's surrounding the neuronal cilia. This is a real model reconstructed from the electron tomograph work. This is a very exciting finding because hundreds of TEM has performed on the worm nose. However, this is the first time we found abundant EVs associated with the neurons and uh, in the uh, lumen that created by the glia. And this provide us a tool to study neuronal um, evas with the glia and how may uh, the neuron and the glia interact via, via uh, extracellular vesicles. So like I said, C. Uh, elegans is a great genetic tool. Um, any biological processes, if you are interested and if you do a genetic screen, you find all the genetic player that involved in the same 
place. So CLIP6 actually was isolated from, um, CLIP6 mutant was actually isolated from the same genetic screen um, that's uh, looking for male mating behavior defects in the male, and uh, Dr. Marine Barr cloned LAV1 and PIGD2. Then CLIP6 turned out to regulate polycysteine 2 localization and uh, the environmental EV release. So in CLIP6 mutant, we found no environmental EV release and abundant extracellular vesicle release in the lumen. This is a cross section of this CLIP6 mutant. You can say abundant EVs in the expanded lumen um, surrounding the neuronal cilia. So this genetic mutants abolish environmental EV release provide a tool for us to compare the bioactivity between Y-type and CLIP6. So this is the result. We isolated C. elegans EVs in the Y-type and in CLIP6 mutant. We found that Y-type EVs trigger the male display a male tail chasing behavior. And CLIP6 EVs are not as efficient as the Y-type and not uh, significantly different from the buffer. So here is the male tail chasing behavior. Here, the male started to chase its own tail by holding onto its own tail, move backward persistently. So normally, the worm would move forward. During male mating behavior, the male move backward persistently. So we consider this tail chasing behavior a motif of male mating behavior. Because the polycysteines are required for male mating behavior and the EV prepped also trigger um, probably a male mating behavior, a motif of the male mating behavior. We ask the question, are the male release the, releasing the extracellular vesicles containing PGD2 during male mating behavior? And if so, where are they targeted? Indeed, we pair the transgenic animal expressing PKD2 GRP with a non fluorescent hermaphrodite and image the hermaphrodite after uh, the male mating. Then we found abundant EVs deposited at hermaphrodite vulva. So, this is the first report showing. Uh, directional transfer of activity evoked EVs from one animal to another. We are very excited by this work because we wonder if the polycysteines play a role in the EVs adhering to the extracellular matrix uh, cuticle of the hermaphrodite. And what are the other molecular and genetic network required for this EV? and extracellular matrix interaction. So during male mating behavior, the male tail are in close contact with the hermaphrodite. We ask the question, what is the trigger that trigger the uh, male release EV during mating? We also observe um, the male release EVs under microscopic condition, imaging condition. So I propose that um, the common cue between male mating behavior and when the male are mounted under the cover sleep is the mechanical pressure. So we designed the experiment to test this hypothesis. First, we padded the cover sleep with a very thin layer of agarose pad. We found that this padded agarose pad completely abolished the EV release. This is a quantification showing that, um, sorry, 
uh, I forgot to mention, then we uh, remove the padded cover slip, then place a new bare cover slip on the same set of animal and image the male again. Now, the bare cover slip triggered abundant PD2 EV release. So this result support our hypothesis that the uh, mechanical pressure from the cover slip triggered the EV release. Another evidence come from the anatomy of the male tail. So anatomically, uh, these um, ray, these male specific cilia uh, protruding from the cuticular pore. The cuticular pore either facing the dorsal side or facing the ventral side. So we found all cilia release EVs, but the dorsal exposing cilia only release EV when the dorsal, the animal um, dorsal side is facing the cover slip. And the ventral cilia only release EV when the ventral side of the animal touching the cover slip. So this is a strong evidence showing that the mechanical pressure really stimulate EV release from the cilia. So um, to summarize, we found that the male specific sensory cilia release EVs carrying conserved signaling protein PKD2 and it's released during male mating and targeted at the hermaphrodite um, cuticle ar around the vulva area. And by electron tomograph analysis, we found extracellular vesicles in the glia lumen surrounding the neuronal cilia. Then we also found uh, environmental release EVs, and these environmental release EVs are actually targeted to the hermaphrodite cuticle. So now I'm going to switch to the third part of my talk. Sensory cilia act as a specialized venue for regulated extracellular vesicle biogenesis and signaling. So, um, as I mentioned, cilia, primary cilia, release extracellular vesicles from the ciliary tip and along the cilia. And in our system, we found the lumen EVs surrounding the ciliary base, and we also found the environmental EVs released outside of the animal. So the question is, where are these ciliary EVs made? And why you find these EVs in multiple locations? We answer these questions by super resolution imaging. We use every scan super resolution imaging, image PKD2 transgenic animal. And we label, co label the cilia uh, compartment with a tubulin marker, namely TBB4. So we found PD2 EV release from the ciliary tip. And these are the EVs released from the tip outside of the animal. And the tip EV does not contain the TBB4 marker. Then we also found PD2 EV release from the ciliary base directly um, budding from the ciliary base. Uh, we found this cluster of EVs. The base EV contain the tubulin marker TBB4. So this result suggests that PD2 EV are shared from two sites, the ciliary tip and the base, and the tip and base EV contain different cargoes. We also used another uh, marker that contain a uh, ciliary marker. We draw the same conclusion that PD2 EVs are released from two sites. To understand how, um, why ciliary EV are made from two sites, we quantified the relevant 
the relative fluorescence distribution of PGD2 along cilia and um, in the environmental EVs and the base EVs. So we found that the cilium PGD2 uh, fluorescence is positively correlated with tip EV biogenesis and inversely related with the base EV biogenesis. These results indicate that the ciliary localization promotes the, the tip EVs but inhibit the base EVs. This has broad implications in ciliopathies because um, most of the conserved ciliary genes are involved in ciliary trafficking. If you disrupt ciliary trafficking, you disrupt ciliary EV biogenesis. How would these disrupted ciliary EV biogenesis contributing to ciliopathy? That is a very interesting question to ask. So we found that the ciliary EV are shed at two sites with different EV cargoes. The base EV budding from the ciliary base directly contain tubulin marker and a transition marker, a transition zone marker called MPHP1. So we also found the environmental signaling EVs indeed coming from the ciliary tip. Then next we ask, how are the EVs made at the ciliary tip? So um, here is another screen we performed in the lab back to 2008 by a former graduate student, Yang Bei, um, that um, we are looking for, we look for PKD2 ciliary localization regulators. It turned out to be a very successful screen that we pull out all the mutants that uh, regulate PKD2 ciliary localization also affect ciliary biogenesis, um, ciliary EV biogenesis. So, um, so seven is the seventh mutant we isolated from the screen. And so seven is a Morris toileted protein with coid coil domains. Surprisingly, CO7 itself is an environmentally released EV cargo. So here is CO7 mutant phenotype. Um, it is defective in um, environmental EV shedding, and we have uh, observed abundant EV accumulation at the ciliary base, like the CLIP6 mutant I have mentioned before. So super resolution imaging uh, showed that this is a 3D projection of PKD2 GLP. This is Y type. Um, so in the Y type, PKD2 is enriched at ciliary tip and is distributed along the cilia. And in the cell seven mutant, however, the PKD2 GLP are enriched at ciliary membrane and accumulate at ciliary base but it's absent in the ciliary tip. So we conclude that not only the ciliary localization of PKD2 required for the tip EV biogenesis, the distal ciliary enrichment also require, is required for PKD2 EV shedding from the tip into the environment. So uh, to ask where do CO7 act and how do CO7 affect uh, the mutant uh, is defective in PKD2 tip EV release and uh, um, it's causing the PKD2 absent in the distal cilia. We uh, performed super resolution imaging and we performed fluorescent profiling analysis along the cilia. And um, we found that PKD2 is enriched at the ciliary tip. And this is a representative image of the profiling analysis. And CIL7 is enriched next to where PKD2 are enriched. 
So this uh, PKD2 uh, enriched at very ciliary tip and CIL7 enriched at distal ciliary part is roughly corresponds to the PKD2 absent zone in the ciliary tip. So we um, conclude that the ciliary distal, uh, the CIL7 distal ciliary lo localization promotes PKD2 EV shedding from the tip. So as I mentioned, CO7 is also an environmental EV cargo. It is also released into uh, the environment outside of the animal. But the question is, are they on the same EV as the PKD2? Or would they be on the same EV? In my mind, um, in the white hype, we should observe the two EVs localized on the same EVs. And in the ciliary mutant, I would find players that are required for uh, ciliary EV cargo sorting. Um, but um, in reality, it's the other case. Uh, this is a quantification showing that PKD2 and CIL7 are largely localized to different EVs. And uh, this is uh, co-localization it's significantly less than the individual uh, localized EVs. So this is a super resolution imaging. With this quantification, we are limited by the um, resolution of the imaging. So uh, with uh, super resolution imaging, we found that even in the EVs, when the CO7 and PD2 are really close uh, with each other, uh, under this quantification method, they would be countered as one EV. We found that the signal actually not overlap completely. So this is a surface rendering of this uh, fluorescent image. We Again, this surface rendering showing that the two signals indeed localize to different EVs. So how do cilia uh, achieve this. From a single ciliary tip, two types of EVs are made. So we ask, how do cilia sort different EVs? In the EV biogenesis cilia, in addition to the IFT carrying kinesin 2 motor, this kinesin 2 motor expressed in all cilia is panciliary then it also has additional kinesin-3 protein, the CLIP6 I mentioned before. The CLIP6 is cell-specific and with a lipid binding domain. So we asked the question, could the ciliary um, kinesins carry different EV cargos for uh, producing two types of EVs from the ciliary tip? So um, the I have to mention that both kinesin-2 mutants and this kinesin-3 mutant abolish the environmental EV release. So this is a white type. We double labeled PGD2 and CIL7 and uh, look at the localization of the two uh, proteins. So this is a PKD2, it localized to ciliary base along cilia and enrich at ciliary tip and shed into EVs. This is CO7, it localized to the ciliary tip and the EVs. Um, I have to mention that um, these CO7 and PKD2 localization look um, different from the previous images. It's because we are imaging L4 animals that is an earlier stage from the young adults. Um, the reason is that the ciliary kinesins accumulate EV cargos. Uh, if we image at a late stage, we um, image the secondary complication of the ciliary trafficking defects of the EV cargo accumulation. So the co-localization of uh, PKD2 and CO7 showing that uh, the, indeed uh, they are localized on different EVs that are released into the environment. So this is a kinesin-3 mutant, the CLIP6. We found that 
in clip 6 mutant now pgd2 indeed accumulate at ciliary base and instead of going to the ciliary tip now pgd2 is enriched at proximal part of the cilium uh, this is cell 7 again cell 7 unlike uh, white hype it's only enriched at ciliary tip now it's enriched at um, proximal part of the cilium so this is a merged image showing that um, both pgd2 and cell 7 accumulate at the proximal part of the cilium also note that the pgd2 form small projections along where cell 7 is enriched so here is the kinesin-2 mutant. Kinesin-2 mutants accumulate PKD2 EV at the ciliary base. Then cell 7 is able to enter the cilia, but it also accumulates at ciliary base. This is a merged image showing that PKD2 only localized at the ciliary base, and cell 7 entered cilia. So this is a quantification of uh, the signal span of uh, PKD2 and CL7 travel along the cilia. In the Y type, PKD2 and CL7 travel the whole, the full ciliary lens to the ciliary tip. In the clip 6 mutant, however, CL7 is significantly uh, really reduced in the uh, distance that it traveled along the cilia. So this is a kinesin-2 mutant, um, different from this kinesin-3 mutant. Um, it affects PKD-2 um, ciliary trafficking in that PKD-2 localized only to the proximal part of the cilia. So we conclude that the uh, two different types of kinesins uh, regulate the EV cargo traffic differently and cilia may engage uh, different ciliary kinesins for making different types of EVs at the ciliary tip. So um, the next question we ask is, what is the biological significance of making two types of EVs from a single ciliary tip? So uh, as I mentioned, CO7 is required for PKD2 EV biogenesis. So we uh, hypothesis that the CO7 is the biogenesis EV, while the PKD2 is the signaling EV. Then the question is, um, would the male, uh, the sensory cilia, use the sensory function to modulate the um, two different types of EV. If the cilia indeed engage two types of ciliary kinesin for making two types of uh, EVs, are they um, regulated at the ciliary tip? So we designed the experiment by um, isolate virgin males and um, the equivalent aged male that exposed to mate. We asked the question, would exposing to the mates uh, increase the signaling uh, PKD2 EVs. So indeed, this is what we found. Uh, this is a virgin male condition, and this is the male uh, that exposed to mating partners. We found that the ratio of PKD2 to CO7 EVA, number, EVA numbers are uh, upregulated. So this indicates that the ciliary tip EV biogenesis is altered by environmental cues, uh, likely by the sensory function of the cilia. In another word, sensory cilia really engage two types of ciliary kinesins to fine tune the EV contents from the ciliary tip. So uh, this is what I talked uh, in the last slide. We propose that CO7 is the biogenesis EV and PKD2 is the signaling EV and the cilia actually engage two uh, different kinesins for trafficking these EV cargoes. And um, the reason um, for engaging different uh, kinesin 
traffic the EV cargoes is to fine tune the EV uh, contents um, in the context of the sensory cues. So to summarize, I talked about C. elegans is a powerful model for studying cilia derived EVs and functions. And I talked about uh, ciliary EV carrying polycystin 2 I released upon mechanical stimulation and the male deposits the EVs on the hermaphrodite cuticle. Um, and we found that the sensory cilia act as a specialized venue for regulated extracellular vesicle biogenesis and signaling. So I would like to spend my thoughts on the project using the last slide. So um, first, we showed that uh, these ciliary EVs are released upon mechanical um, stimulation. Um, I think um, in the era of well, this post-cell biology um, era, I consider that um, when mechanical biology become an uh, independent field, and I think EV biology is also a development of the tissue biology field, that uh, we started to appreciate the, me the mechanical stimulation, stimulation in the regulation of our uh, body system. As an animal, our cells constantly facing mechanical stimuli from our movement and from our overcoming gravity. So I hope what we found uh, from C. elegans that the mechanical EV uh, signal release, um, trigger EV release is a general uh, applicable principle for ciliary, uh, for EV release in our body. But that is much more complex. And we are geared to use the elegance to dissect the molecular mechanism of this um, mechanical regulated EV release. Then I also talked about these uh, extracellular vesicles are uh, targeted on the hermaphrodite cuticle surrounding the vulva. So the hermaphrodite cuticle is a type of extracellular matrix that is uh, enriched with glycosylated and uh, lipoproteins. These um, extracellular vesicles adhere and attach to the um, ECMs. It's really intriguing uh, in that what are required for the EV to be um, attached to the cuticle. Do the adhesion GPCR polycystin 1 play a role in the EV adhesion function? I think this funding also has um, broader implication because in our body fluids, when the extracellular vesicle enters circulation, are the EVs covered with gly glycosylated proteins when they have uh, trans tissue uh, targeting? Do the EVs have to encounter the extracellular matrix first? How do they um, overcome the extracellular matrix and access the cell? So. I think C. elegans will provide a great tool to study these interesting questions. Then thirdly, I think the most shocking uh, finding of this research is that from a single ciliary tip, two types of EVs are made that contain different EV cargoes. Then, from the same neuron at the ciliary base, another type of EVs that release into the glia lumen that I mentioned in my talk that contain different EV cargoes. I, I think this heterogeneity of EV biogenesis from a single um, cell is really remarkable. It makes me think 
that maybe we should shift our concept of one cell release a type of EV target a single cell. Instead, the heterogeneity maybe it's an intrinsic feature of the EV communication. The totality of the EV maybe act like a network to mediate intercellular communication. So these are wild speculations, but I think we, um, as um, C. elegans researcher, we um, use this live animal system really hold great power in understanding these fundamental uh, questions in the EV biology. And the ciliary EV sit at the interdiscipline field of cilia biology and EV biology really um, holds the great potential in understanding ciliopathies as well as tissue homeostasis in health and disease conditions such as cancer. So with this, I uh, sincerely invite you to talk with us and ask us questions to support our basic research. With this, I would like to thank my lab, my co-authors, my co-workers, my collaborators, and the funding agencies. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm happy to take questions. Uh, okay. Thank you so much. Uh one um, a wonderful talk and uh, really going into details on how the EV is being produced by cilia cells and actually like a, just a small comments on, on the mechanical pressure um, there's a study in prostate cancer looking into EV in the urine and it's they found that if mechanical pressure applied using a digital well during digital rectal examination is actually increased the secretions of EV. So that's kind of interesting sort of parallel between the cilia and C. elegans and human um, uh, prostate uh, cells. Well, uh, now uh, we actually like uh, only have within five to 10 minutes for question and answer. Uh, Anne Wehrman, please go ahead and ask your questions. Hi, nice to see you. So I had a couple questions. One of them you already answered about um, whether you thought the EVs were sticking to the cuticle or whether they were actually going into the tissue. Do you see them going into the spermatheca or the uterus at all? Uh, we have not observed it. So we actually, uh, in the experiment, we used um, a metal tracker to label the sperm to make sure that we are imaging mated hermaphrodites. So we found the sperm um, that are in the uterus, but we didn't say uh, evades in the uterus. So do you think this could be some kind of autocrine signaling where the, the male is helping itself find the vulva again? I think there are, um, yes, this is definitely a, a possibility. And another, um, yeah, it's, um, um, it may help the male to fine tune the sensory capacity to locate the vulva. Another possibility we are thinking that um, in the C. elegans, um, the vulva is a vulnerable part of the worm that uh, infectious bacteria or fun uh, fungi actually um, attach to the vulva area. So I think. Uh, another uh, role these EV play, might play is uh, mediating um, immune protection for the mated partner. Uh, so we performed a transcriptome analysis on these EV releasing neurons. Uh, indeed, we found a lot of uh, innate immune related genes. Are there antimicrobial peptides known in C. elegans? Yes, yes, indeed. Um, there is um, EV cargo actually is predicted as uh, antimicrobial peptide. 
And then my third question was um, looking at the EV release of the SIL 7 versus the PKD number. I don't remember. PKD um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Do you think you might be seeing release from the sides of the cilia rather than the true tip? So do you think there's budding happening sort of all around the cilia or do you think it's really restricted to the, the part where it, it there's high curvature? Um, uh, in the Y type, um, we um, did not say um, other kind of EV release sites. So we think it's from the ciliary tip, but in um, some mutants, uh, we found uh, like kind of a side branch so that indicates that the PKD2 EV biogenesis site is tightly regulated in the Y type, and it may um, play a role in ensure the pure PKD2 enriched EV for signaling. That's my thinking. Mm -hmm. okay. um, uh, Duan, I was just wondering how difficult is it to isolate EVs from C. elegans? And can you actually do some sort of mass spectrometry on the EVs to find out more about the cargo and you know other tests like next generation sequencing? Can you actually do that? Yes, uh, thank you for asking that question. Um, our lab actually um, are, are doing that. Uh, we are very interested in um, the uh, signaling um, the co-partner of the um, polycysteine interacting network that would be on the same e-ways. So we use pkd 2 jp as a marker uh, combined with um, biochemistry technique to fraction the um, e-ways and to uh, decoding the composition of the e-ways. That's a ongoing work in the lab. Yeah, it will be interesting to see whether the uh, equivalent of the tetraspanins in human is also in the EVs on um, whether there's some sort of like um, exosomes like multifascicular bodies origin rather than plasma membrane as well. I think I think there's a lot of things to do there. So really best of luck of your study. Um, it's very interesting topic and you've got a powerful tool there that we can also visualize it and study the yeah. biological significance. Thanks so much for sharing that with us today. 